Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark, the Land Geek, and I'm back this week again with Duran Frazier from Reserve Land Management. And uh, Duran, I think before we get started with our podcast, I think we should mention uh, the horrific events of uh, this week, the uh, Boston bombings. And uh, just, you know, it's just horrific. I don't even know what to say. Just it's, uh, you know, our hearts and, and prayers go out to the entire city and, and those whom, uh, whom uh, have suffered. I mean, I think that whole city and the whole country is scratching our heads and wondering how this could happen. I totally agree with you. And then, of course, uh, the explosion this morning uh, or yesterday that they had in, uh, in Texas as well. Obviously, uh, several people died there as well. Not sure uh, if that was a, just a, a simple miscue at the fertilizer plant or if it was more um more of a uh, plot but i'm not sure again we don't know much information about that but again thoughts and prayers both in boston and of course in uh, i think it's called west texas so west, yeah west texas that's right yeah so on that happy note let's get started with what you've been doing this week because i think our uh our potential land listeners or land investors are going to know what's it like to go to an actual land auction so, Duran, kind of fill us in what you what you did last week, and I'll I'll explain from my perspective how I prepared for it as well, because we both took two different strategies. One was more successful than the other. So let's talk about that. So, uh, Duran took uh, you took your wife, didn't you, and the kids? Oh man, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, it, it sounded so good, too good to be true, to be able to get my wife and kids to go on a 2,000-mile journey, um, but over <laughs> f- over five days. And when I say 2,000 miles, I mean literally, I think it was 1,975 miles, maybe 1,980 miles. So right. we got really close to 2,000 miles. We averaged about, I think, about 400 miles a day of driving, but when you're driving a big RV, uh, and the kids are supposed to be strapped down, so I, I did my very best to do that, but you have to... <laughs> When you have two wild kids, it doesn't work out that way. So, yeah, we did we did a little stop at Zion National Park on the way up to uh, to northern Nevada. We did another stop in Park City, Utah, which we got a little uh, a couple of little unexpected turbulence issues there. Uh, snowed six inches overnight. We were there, so having an RV hooked up or not, um, you know, it's kind of nice to actually be in a hotel room. So, um, I just happened to jump on Priceline that day, and I got I got in late in Utah on a, on a Sunday night, which is a little bit of a negative when people are going home at about four or five o'clock for the night on Sunday. So, booked a hotel there, and uh, we stayed at a beautiful place at, at Park City on the slopes, which is amazing for a night. And then we headed over to uh, the Oxford Elko, and uh, met with everybody. Um, we did a dinner, dinners, and you know, had a uh, had a couple conversations with some of the people that we uh, we've been in touch with over the years. And uh, the auction was Tuesday morning. And yeah, how, it, how many people were at that auction? Well, all I can say is that it was the craziest auction I've ever been to, uh, probably between 150 and 200 people, which scared the daylights out of me. Why, why were there so many people there? I actually have no clue because uh, prices were still pretty reasonable. In fact, I picked up property cheaper uh, this year than I picked up last year uh, at the auction. But, uh, you know, again, I think – uh, they had some this year. A lot of properties on on uh, on auction, but a lot of them were larger parcels. They were selling for four, five, six thousand for some of the larger parcels. So you know there was some there was some plenty of due diligence that was needed needed uh, before making a commitment to some of these parcels. Yeah, let me let me ask you. So how what was your approach to doing the due diligence? How did how did you go about it? You got the list from I assume either the county treasurer or taxsalelists.com. And then how did you go about – I know you didn't do the research. How did you go about doing it? Uh, well, actually, I did do a lot of the research myself. I'm very, I'm very handy when it comes to Google Maps. And the county assessor – I'm sorry, the county treasurer actually sent over a list of GPS coordinates. Okay. So what what I did is I took each coordinate, and I I did have one of my employees help me with that. So this is you know when it comes time to uh, to go to an auction that I enjoy going or enjoy spending some money at, 
I generally do a little bit more research on my end. So my five hour work week actually turned into like maybe a 10 hour work, work week for me. Okay. So, so I went through and just took the GPS coordinates, went through a lot of the coordinates. Uh, my, my, uh, my personal assistant actually helped me with a lot of that, um, putting it together, but I did go through some of the stuff myself and we just sort of plotted, uh, you know, good, good, bad and fair and, uh, you know, picked up based accordingly to that, uh, that little strategy that I put in place. So, so what what do you consider good? What do you consider bad? What do you consider fair when you're looking at at the map? Because you're not physically going out and stopping on this property. Uh, at times I do. In fact, uh, generally I like to take a car out there and do it. Unfortunately, weather weather permitting um, uh, is when I when I make that commitment. And this time it wasn't happening. It was uh, snowy, raining, um, and just you know one one of the guys that was out there at the auction he got stuck. It took him three hours to fix a flat tire. And he was in the middle of nowhere, so um, and he couldn't find his jack in the car. So you know, there are there are times where it's a little bit a little bit scary. Um, but I do like to I do like to go out there and, and check. But you know, what I'll do is I'll work with some of the other guys that I know have done the homework. And you know, like if you're in class sometimes and you're looking over at your friend's paper and you cheat, right. um, I do the auction cheat once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I I'll I'll say I'm guilty as charged on that as well. So I'll tell you the way I approached that auction was very, very different than you did. So you physically went up. You wanted to bid for yourself. I actually contacted a local real estate agent and sent her my auction list, what my maximum bid would be. And I paid her, I think I paid her $100 for her time and effort to go to the auction, bid for me. And then I gave her a check made out to the treasurer. So if she bought me anything, she could make payment that day. So typically, I only do that if I think the auction's going to be a bust for me. And uh, for whatever reason, I wasn't real excited about this auction, so I hired the uh, the agent. But it wasn't a bust for you. You were able to, out of, out of what, 150 lots, you were able to pick up 10? Correct, correct. Okay. And you're going to make how much money uh, on those lots? Uh, let's see. If I do the math, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's. We can, I'll probably make around on on a on a term basis. Meaning, if I finance over five or ten years, I'll probably make between fifty and sixty thousand bucks on the problem on that on what I picked up. Okay, so Duran's gonna make fifty or sixty thousand dollars on that auction. I'm gonna make zero. Am I bitter? No, because. The way I look at it is a lot of the, my competitors went out there and they spent – how much money do you think on average uh, our competitors spent out there? Uh, I think there was probably – our competitors between thirty and 50000 each on some property. And, and in fact, what's interesting and unique about w- watching that auction is I watched people overpay for property. In fact, overpay so much that – I knew they would have a hard time selling. When we say competitors, we mean we mean people that not only do terms but also do cash, and we know what cash or what properties sell for, um, according to several different right. strategies that allow us to compare the property. So I saw some of that stuff happening, and it's and you know some people bid other other people up that they know each other, and simply because it's like almost uh, what's what's the word like I'm I'm a little more powerful than you, right? Right, I'm right. You. Yeah, so. e- egos get in the way. Big egos. Yeah. Big egos. So, so I, tr- I try to avoid those types of auctions. Um, the way I would approach that type of situation where, um, you know, there's going to be so many people. There's, you know, I'm, I'm contrarian. I want to, I want to find property where, you know, people aren't going to and, and get a better deal. Uh, you know, would I like to make fifty and sixty thousand dollars the way you're going to on that property? Absolutely. But there's so much out there that. It's better for me not to overpay, than uh, and miss out than than go and you know get swept up and feel like oh I'm going to miss out on a deal if I don't overbid. And I think that's what happens a lot of times at these auctions. Would you agree? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I think it happens quite often. Uh, in fact, more often than not, where where people walk walk up to these auctions and they get caught up in the emotion of the bid. Uh, and that's one thing I don't ever do. I, in fact, I like to watch what happens for the first 10 or 15. Even if it's something I want, I kind of watch the momentum of the auction. And if I see it swinging one way um, in a direction I don't like, I just kind of back off and sit in my seat. And people know at these auctions that, that 
I've been in the land game for quite some time. So it's, you know, there's several 10, 15 people that are at those auctions bidding and they, they know, who, everyone knows who everybody is. So if they don't see somebody bidding, I think generally they're questioning, oh, is he have the, does he not have the money? What's going on? What's the situation? So it's really interesting the way I approach an auction compared to, you know, what I see out there. And I stay away from that, that ego bidding. Right, right. So now, just so everybody knows, the difference between cash and terms, cash is when you buy a piece of property at a auction and then you flip it for a cash sale, terms means that you're going to carry the note. So they're going to make a down payment of say a thousand dollars, and then Duran will carry that paper at maybe easy terms, ten percent interest rate, two hundred dollars a month for maybe ten years, and you know he may actually get out his initial investment just on the down payment. So all those payments down the line are just pure profit, which is why he's making so much money, even only on 10 lots. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of profit. You know, that's just a, my, my, my goal is to break, <laughs> to break even. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, but, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's fantastic because it's a one-time sale and you get passive income every month. There's really nothing better. Where I think if you're gonna if you sell for cash, then you've got to keep buying property because you need to keep uh, filling up your inventory to keep making money. Now, when you first start out in this, it's really important to build up a cash base. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, you can't just do everything on terms. You're not gonna you're gonna run out of cash real fast, right? Correct, correct. It it it, it does need you know finding those diamond and a rough properties, and there are uh, several auctions that that have those. If you do your due diligence, where you'll find a property where you pick it up for you know three, two, three, four, five thousand bucks, and it's worth twenty five or thirty, um, even online at an auction that you can sell quickly. So there there are those, uh, and they and they do happen. They're not they're not flukes. They're not you know it's not like hitting the lottery. Um, they're out there. You just have to do your due diligence. Right, right. Okay, so. Let's get back to the due diligence. So you plot mm -hmm. out everything on the GPS coordinates on Google Earth, and you did it yourself. You didn't have a, uh, a virtual assistant. I had my virtual assistant do everything, and um, and that's how I came up with my bidding structure, which wasn't real successful, obviously. But um, that kind of surprised me. I mean, do you do you typically do all your own due diligence? Um, I like to. I like to be. The one to make the decision as to so I'll look at it. So I don't have a virtual assistant. I have a personal assistant. That actually sits at my sits next to me at my desk every day. Um, and when I say at my desk, I think she actually comes uh, to my house and helps me, which is kind of like you know, right. it's really it's really interesting. You know, I, I guess the dynamic for me not having to go to an office, um, but to have a, an assistant that comes for fifteen hours a week and help me, uh, it's pretty neat. But she comes in really really talented and smart uh, girl, and she helps me sit down and sort of plot things out, and then. Uh, Either she'll go to the auction for me, or, or of course I'll go to the auction. So we're kind of, it's kind of a you know hands-on for me. So I enjoy it. Oh, that's great. That's great. So now, when you're looking at Google Earth, what types of things are you looking for? So you say, okay, I'm going to avoid that property. Uh, this property I really like just by looking at the the screen. What do you, what are you what are you looking for typically? Generally, I'm looking for roads, so access. Uh, access obviously being uh, the key ingredient to uh, a potential good, bad, or fair property. Uh, but but access, no access, um, or minimal access is something I'll put either at bad or or you know maybe a D minus on my on my uh, card. Um, but I I don't I I you know, I'm always looking for something if it's if it's got a road to it. How far is that road from the main highway? Um, is it is it something that's 25 miles off a dirt road? Is it impossible for your potential clients to get to? Um, and those are all things I look for when I'm buying a property because what you want to do is you don't want to buy a property in the middle of uh, nowhere where your client can't get to or they're looking, hey, I'm interested in the property. You know, you've got a price to this price, but I can't get to it. And so, and and I think that a lot of people understand when they're looking at land how that how that works. But for me, it's all about access, and of course, the the other benefits are power, um, paved road, that kind of stuff. And those are those are the things that kind of generally I'll I'll go, you know, I'll I'll um, I'll I'll jeez, oh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Qualify. Qualify. There we go. Qualify yeah. it as, at either as a as a you know a plus good property or a D minus or F property bad property. Now, what about how do you do your lean searches? Um, lean, be, are you talking about searching lean properties? No, no, no. Actually, I mean, okay, so we could talk about that too between tax deed 
states and tax lien states. This is this is actually a tax deed property where you actually get the deed for the property, not on a lien. And that's a whole other ball game. But what I mean by you know how do you know there weren't any liens or encumbrances on the title of that property? Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay, I, I thought you were referring to a lien auction. Uh, generally, the, the best way to go about it is, is going to a county and doing your research the day of or the day before spending time because it, it, it's a, it's a process where you've got to sit in the county office. You look at you look at what you want, and it's hard. It's hard in the auction that's this large to generally go through every single property. Um, you can generally assume, and again, we know what, what assuming does. Um, but you can <laughs> you can generally assume that these smaller lots that are going for let's say five or six hundred dollars are not going to have those liens. But that can't happen. Um, right. There there could be liens against it, and at, at that point um, you may have to do quiet title um, or and I, and I don't know um, you know every state is different, and so the, there is due that needs to be you know that needs to be done in every state because some states actually wipe off any. Any, uh, I, you know, I'm not sure. Are you familiar with which states do and don't, Mark? Yes, I, I am. I mean, so, you know, the tax deed states, um, you know, I know, that, you know, for example, like New Mexico has a six month redemption period. Texas has a redemption period. I believe Arizona have a, has a redemption period. Nevada, I don't believe, has a redemption period. So you buy that property at, at auction, all the liens uh, get wiped out. So, you're basically paying for the back taxes. The only lien that can stay on that property in Nevada, and I believe in Arizona and some other states, is an IRS lien. So when I do my searches, I'm not worried about um, any other liens on the property except for IRS because all those other people get wiped out. So they have their shot uh, before the auction to make payment, make payment for taxes. They get notified by the treasurer. If they don't pay it, they're getting wiped out, and um, got it. Yeah, and that's yeah. and generally that's what I'm I'm looking for. And I, and I but actually not, like but not an IRS lien. I call the treasurer and I always ask because the the IRS notifies the county, and they know. So I always ask: Is are there any IRS liens on any properties? Got it. Yeah, and it, and it's for for me my my due diligence, due diligence aspect is more along the lines of uh, is there could there be a home on the property uh, which it, it, you know at some level there's a home on the property and there's a mortgage against the property you could be buying a more valuable property if you haven't had a chance to go out and actually visit the property if that makes sense. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. Now I always avoid properties with homes on them, um, simply because I'm not a maintenance guy and if I'm in Arizona I don't want to buy a house in Nevada I don't want to have to maintain that. And, um, you know, it could be a sad situation where somebody has to, you have to evict somebody from their home because they lost it to back taxes. That's, and, and we're, I think that's pretty rare actually, because usually before that, the bank will come in and pay off the taxes on that type of situation. Wouldn't you agree? I, I would. I'll, I will say something interesting that happened at the Elko auction. Uh, there was a woman there that, that was living, I think, maybe with a trailer on a property and she had she had been crying prior to the auction and asked if people wouldn't bid on that lot and that if if she could just tap that for four hundred dollars because she couldn't pay the taxes and, or whatever the opening bid was I think it was four hundred dollars so so that was the only property that nobody bid on and it was literally one hundred and fifty two hundred people there and everybody was quiet she bid it four hundred bucks and she won it um, so it's pretty neat to see that but you're right it, it, dealing with homes uh, you know it, 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 again it all depends because there are. There are certain areas, of course, uh, around the country where you go to an, you go to a tax deed auction and you can pick up homes for thirty, forty grand that are worth a hundred, hundred and ten thousand, and maybe you have to get creative where you go back and you finance them or you know you create some sort of mortgage um, with with the you know the old owners, uh, right. but you now own the property. So th there are there are situations like that, but again, in what we do, it's a little bit harder. Um, but there are opportunities like that. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I I personally avoid those situations. It's not it's not my niche. I just stick with the raw land. But um, in in that whole, that's a completely different uh, model because that's buying houses on the on the courthouse steps. There's a lot more competition, and uh, you can make a lot of money doing it. You need to have a lot of cash up front. Um, it's a completely different ball game. I mean, how much money total did you spend on that auction? Uh, I spent right around, uh, I think, eleven thousand dollars. Eleven thousand dollars, you're going to make fifty to sixty thousand dollars. It's a pretty good return on your investment. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but you wouldn't be able to buy a house for eleven thousand dollars typically. 
That's correct. And I, you know, to be honest, yeah, I would have spent more money, but it, at this auction, it was just too many people, too many egos. I uh, just let let a lot of things go, and I saw a lot of things go overpriced. Uh, but I do agree that um, that that there are there are auctions where I'll walk in and and I know I'm going to spend thirty or forty, fifty thousand. Um, and I know most of the listeners here probably go, well, gosh, thirty or forty, that's way, way out of my out of my league. But that doesn't matter. I mean, you can you can go to an auction and bring a thousand dollars with you and pick up a lot or two uh, and start from there. Yeah, I mean, you've got you've got to start somewhere. And I started with three thousand. You started with eight hundred dollars. So you build. And you build uh, doing this, and you start flipping for cash. You save your cash, and then you can make, you'll get that big hit. It may it may be at an auction. It may be doing a letter writing campaign. It may be going after a, a distressed company that has a hundred lots in their name. But as long as you're hustling out there and finding the deal, you're going to do well. Yeah. Speaking of big hits, Mark, why don't why don't you tell us some of your big hits? What have you done? Tell me tell me where some of the big hits have come from. Well, you know that you know Nevada has been my bread and butter as well. Um, Forty acre parcels have been, you know, very very good to me, and uh, the tens and the twenties and the fives. Lately, I've really been focused on Colorado, uh, and Florida, and uh, more Nevada property. Um, I'm I haven't really found a whole lot in New Mexico lately. And because they're, they're, they changed the whole tax structure there with the back taxes, they really raised the taxes. So I'm really avoiding New Mexico. Um, and I've got a bunch of letter writing campaigns going in, in all these areas so that I constantly have deal flow coming in. And I just want to be overwhelmed by it so that I never feel like I've got to close a deal because I'm low on inventory. Got it. Got it. So, but now you didn't really, you kind of, you, as a, as a politician, you sort of brushed around that question. Um, I want to know some, some you dollar know, you signs. Know exactly how much I want to know spending. specifically some big hitter deals that you've made where you paid, let's say 30 grand for a property and you sold it for 200 grand. Okay. So, uh, I just closed this week a deal. I just paid, uh, I believe I want to say I bought 14, 40 acre parcels from one distressed company. Uh, in Pershing County, Nevada, my profit on that, if I liquidate, is going to be about forty-five to fifty thousand, and my profit, if I do terms, is going to be over two hundred thousand. I'm really excited about that property. It's in the, in, it's got a great story. It's got excellent access. It's near the foothills, and you've got Rye Patch Reservoir views, and you know how I got it was the letter writing campaign and uh that, that was actually a crazy story it was it was more a, a deed grabber situation because if we didn't close it that day it was going to go to auction and we'd have to bid on it like everybody else so it was really a special deal and uh i feel very fortunate to have gotten it but yeah i mean you know it, it's 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 a constant you know, process and constantly hustling, looking for deals. And I know you only work, you know, four or five hours a week, but that doesn't mean that deal flow stops. That just means that you've got the systems in place so that you constantly have deals coming in. You have your marketing, you have your your deal analysis, you have your due diligence, and it all comes together. And it doesn't take a lot of time once you put these systems in place. Exactly, exactly. And we started, you know, you and I started uh, with LAN uh, when, we, when we did and not understanding several aspects of the due, dil- due diligence process. Man, I tell you, I have a tough time with those two words. Due, due diligence. 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 Okay. Right. Maybe I, my yeah. problem is I speak too fast. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you. So you bought these properties at Elko. Now, do you, when you start marketing it right away, do you contact neighbors first? Do you just say, hey, I bought your, I bought, I've got property right next to you. You want to buy it? How do you, how do you what's your strategy right away out of the gate when you uh, buy gen- these these new properties? Generally, I'm I'm putting ads together. So uh, I got lucky at this auction where I picked up uh, two separate locations. I picked up three contiguous lots. So I got three and a half acres in each subdivision, which was and both were pretty nice subdivisions. Um, and I paid a paid a very very good price for um, all six lots. But uh, so what I'll do is I'll I'll put I'll put ads together. Yeah, when so, you say very good price, I mean you're paying like twenty cents on the dollar on these, aren't you? 
Uh, yeah, you could say, you know, if I could take one of those parcels and sell it for, uh, let's say in this case, I think I paid about seven or eight hundred dollars a lot. Wow. Uh, and I bought three lots together, so twenty four hundred dollars, and I can probably turn those for about, um, let's say, you know, maybe four forty five hundred, maybe five thousand in cash, um, okay. which I think I could do better than that. But that's liquidation value, right. and then I. And then I could, I could, in terms, I can probably roughly about fourteen or fifteen thousand um, off off of the twenty four hundred thousand dollars investment. That's and that's without interest. So you add interest, and it's probably a little bit higher than that. Right, right. So, uh, but but I'm and you know some people I'm different. Uh, where some people in, in instantly contact the owner next door. Are you interested? But generally speaking, I've I haven't had a ton of success with that. Right. And so I focus on what doesn't waste time. Right. Right. So you're, you're very efficient. All right. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, we've really covered a lot of topics. I mean, we really covered the Elko auction, uh, the due diligence aspect of it, the excitement of it uh, for you, the the agony of defeat for me. What uh, you got any tips of the of the week you want to give our listeners? Uh, you know, I just always, always think creatively, always think outside the box how can i market better than the next guy and that's where no i want a specific tip like a website like where do you go gosh well you know there's a there's a really cool website and i don't know the name of it um right off the top of my head but it's a it's a website you probably do know it mark it's it's that website where you can learn just about every everything it's um it's a woman's name it's uh what is it called have you not heard of it where you can go and you can literally like if you want to learn HTML, if you want to learn uh, t- certain aspects of marketing or advertising, I think it's like – I don't know. I don't. I have no idea what you're talking about. Gosh, I got I to gotta find that website. Anyways, it's Are really cool. Are you messing cool. with me? No, it's, it's really cool because you can go learn about – uh, you know how to how to build a site using HTML. You can learn about different aspects: how to use Photoshop, how to use, how to do design, how to shoot photos, all these different things. And I think it's like it's like Di- Diane's. Di- I don't know what. No, no, no. It's not, I don't know what it is. I got it. I, it's a woman's name. I'm gonna find out, uh, but I, I, and I'm giving it to you. I, I can't believe you're you're teasing us. This is this great website, but I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, I'm, this is I'm, your tip. Give me another tip. Oh, um, gosh, what is another tip for you? Jeez, Mark. Am you I put me on the spot. All right, you think about it. I'll, I'll give the listeners my tip. Okay, so my tip of the day or, or the week is a due diligence tip. So Duran goes out, and when he does his due diligence, he rents the RV. He goes and looks at a, out a property. I do things a little bit differently. I hire people to do that. So I use a site called wegolook.com. And for about 75 to 80 bucks, they'll send out somebody to follow those GPS coordinates where Duran was looking at that auction. And they'll tell me there's access, there's mountain views, there's good soil. They'll take pictures. They'll prepare a whole report. And it saved me so much time and so much money by having to drive. How many miles did you drive out there? 2,000 total miles. 2,000 miles. So that saves me 2,000 miles and all that time. So that I can spend more time doing deals. But and, here's uh, the here, here's the difference between me and you. I got to hang out with my family, buddy. Come on. Well, now. You're, well, look. <laughs> uh, I mean, look. You you're gonna make fifty to sixty thousand dollars for taking the time to drive out there and do it. I'm making nothing on that auction. Yeah. So oh, who, who but, benefited? But I, I found out my tip. I just hit it hit my it hit me on top of my head. Linda.com. L Y N D A. L Y N D A dot com. Lynn.com. You can go there to learn anything, and if you're and for me, uh, it's all about letting your brain expand. It you know becoming a wealth of knowledge so that when you're trying to figure out how do I do Photoshop, how do I learn HTML, you can go to the site for I think it's access for like whatever thirty bucks a month. You can you can actually take any course you want. So it opens it up. It goes to the entire course. It's really neat. So you can learn you can learn different aspects of marketing. So say you're you know you're forty five years old and you're like, well, I just I'm not very proficient at Photoshop. Well, great. This will teach you how to how to be proficient at Photoshop, and you can utilize that on your ads when you're putting ads together. All right. Well, this has uh, been our second podcast, and uh, Duran Frazier from. Reserve Land Management. And Dran, where we can find you? What's your website? Reserveland.com. Reserveland.com, correct. And he's also a serial entrepreneur. He uh, sent me today. What's the What's the name of the, the startup? It's really cool. You're contributing at. 
Um, it was it the Surf Magazine. Which magazine oh, was that? Oh, it's called Four L Magazine. F O U R, and then the the next word is L E L, which is for him. Uh, and then it's it's basically being in San Diego. It's a little bit of it got a little Spanish. Um, you know, a little Spanish splash to it, but it's it's basically a, a lifestyle, men's fashion, fitness, uh, health, uh, business magazine for San Diego, based on San Diego. So it's not like a you know like, like a Fortune meets men's health um, on a national level, but it's more based in San Diego. So it's pretty neat. That's cool. And uh, this is Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek. You can find me at thelandgeek.com, and uh, go ahead and put in your email address and first name and download the investor's passive blueprint and uh it's really good information thanks for listening this is mark podolsky the land geek signing off with joran frazier hope this is a productive week for you we'll see you next week thanks a lot take care guys land geek out thank you for listening to another episode of the land geek Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.